So I've been skating polar skateboards for a couple years now exclusively. I did skate a hockey deck previously for quite a while. Unfortunately, my hockey deck is pretty done. The rails are falling off. So today we're gonna set up a new polar board. I'll go into why I think this is like my favorite board, why I think everything about this deck is, is perfect for anybody that likes to skate transition or likes to skate the stuff that I like to skate. I think this is my favorite skateboard of all time. Throughout my entire life of skateboarding, I've been skating most of my life. I've been skating longer than I haven't been skating. So we're gonna do some grip tape art today as well. And then we'll go break this board in, kind of dive into the logistics. There's one thing specifically about this deck that I think just makes me love it. And I keep buying it over and over and over that no other board companies really offer. A few companies offer it. We'll get into what that is in a second. First thing is first, I actually want to do some grip tape art. Like I was saying, the last board I didn't do that. I felt like it just didn't have that special touch. I have this photo of me and my wife. So what I'm gonna try to do is basically line it up, kind of cut out the grip tape before I even put it down over here on the floor, cut it out. The idea is put the grip tape on there and then have some clear mob grip. So I just picked up a whole nother roll of this stuff from the local skate shop. And I'm gonna put the clear mob grip on top of the pitcher so that you know, it doesn't get messed up. That's the goal. So first things first, or actually what I'm gonna do is kind of cut right around it while it's on top of my board just because then I have a better idea of where the grip tape's actually gonna be. Because the thing is, I have just freestyled it in the past and then it just didn't end up right where I wanted it to end up. So, with that said, I'm just gonna do a little freestyle cut right here on my lap. Probably not ideal, but you know, one of those things, I could tape this down. It's actually probably the right way to do it. I have a little bit of scotch tape right here too, so I can tape this down so it doesn't move. You know, the whole black grip tape thing. That way, it stays like consistently in one place. So that's probably a good way to do it. Just tape it down so that you know exactly where it's gonna be next time when you put it on the board. Not exactly, but you get a good idea. Now, I'm gonna use my little X-Acto knife. And just cut right along it. Now the goal is to not really have too much uh, exposed outside of the image. Meaning, I don't want too much veneer to show. I just want the photo. Kind of like a little window box. That's the goal. It's got these two sides over here. Now, I need to get this side. Also, you guys mentioned in the last video how I didn't use spacers in my bearings. That was a big mistake on my part. I actually have some spacers today to put back into those bearings, my bone Swiss. Because I definitely do want those bearings to last as long as possible. So I will be adding in some some washers. And what I mean by washers are these little things that go in between your bearings. And there is a big reason why you want to do that. For a long time, I actually didn't ride the washers. I felt like it was a little unnecessary. So there we go. I cut it out. And we'll explain why those are necessary in a second. But now that I got that little window out of my grip tape, I have the pitch right here. Now what I can do is kind of do a similar thing with the clear grip. Now I know exactly the size of it. I have a good idea of the size of it. I know how long I want this clear grip tape to be. Essentially start at the bottom and do it right in the center. So I don't have to line this up too much. I can take this tape off now. What I can do is essentially use this and then start from the bottom piece. So I don't have to cut anything. I just have to cut these three edges versus that other edge over there, which makes things a little more easy. I'm not gonna use all this clear grip. Typically I make it last a while. My wife's behind the camera. She's shy right now because she has no makeup on. She just rolled out of bed while I'm out here. Out here having fun cutting grip tape. Grind on your face. <laughs> I'm not gonna grind on your face. I'm gonna be stepping on it a little bit though, for sure. I like the Jessup grip tape. This actually comes from Ken Distribution too. A lot of people like mob grip tape. I've gone into why I like Jessup. I actually like that it's not super gritty on the top. So this stuff is a little more soft. Just so I can show you guys. That's it, I just set it down. Now, yeah, that looks pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And I left a little on the top, a little bit of grip tape. Clear on the top. I like having a little clear, clear area where it's just veneer, because then you can grab your board. And the thing about having like really gritty grip tape is it messes up your thumb. Been skating most of your life, you start to figure these things out that you like or don't like. <laughs> All right, so now the idea is to put the mob grip, the little window right on top of the photo. So obviously the photo doesn't fall off. Uh-oh, I think I gotta commit. I didn't want to commit though, but I got it on the photo and I don't think I can take it off the photo now. Oh no. Oh no. 
I risked it. I just wanted to get it on there right. Just ruin this whole thing. See, what you gotta do is actually make a little more room for the clear grip, because otherwise you do what I did. I got the clear grip like perfectly over the pitcher, but now it's not sticking on the board because uh, I need some extra room. So, might not be able to use this photo. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. I'm gonna make a little more room up here, making that window a little bit wider, essentially. That's what I have to do. That's all right, trial and error, just like skating. Can't grip it first try, gotta grip it like third try. <laughs> this is becoming into a, quite the ordeal right now. Wow, we got a photo from 10 years ago, replacing the other one since I ruined it. Yeah. That one's I kinda like that, it's like an old photo of us. I'm gonna be a little more patient with this one. Take it a little slower. I'm gonna go on the edge this time versus the bottom. There we go. I wish I had like one of those little rollers like they do at skate shops that can like roll the grip. That's the idea. I got it on there. Me and my wife. There's a photo. It'll get better too. Like the clear grip at, at first looks a little murky. Once you step on it and you start like really riding it a little more, it gets better. So I like to file my board down. The point of like filing it down is because A, it's cut, it cuts a lot easier after you file it. And not only that, you kind of prevent it from curling up. Because the thing is, if you don't do this, a lot of times what happens is your grip tape starts curling up and you have problems in the long run. You guys are gonna hate me because yet again, I don't have a skate tool. Well, I have a skate tool. It's just in my friend's car. And I mean, every skater knows, like if you keep buying skate tools, people will keep taking them. So eventually you kind of just got to stop. If you've skated long enough, you definitely set it aboard. You've set a board up with some pliers before. <laughs> it's not ideal, but that's what we're going to have to do today. I do not have a skate tool. It's embarrassing. At the same time, I don't want to go buy another skate tool just because I don't have one at the moment. That's a little ridiculous. I need to just go to my friend. Like when do you change hardware? I normally change it when it starts to become stripped. Typically that takes a few years. So I might just have to make the conscious decision of changing it for the sake of setting up, setting down boards. Before we do anything else, what I'm gonna do is actually use this little pad. Who knows, maybe I'll save this for future use. I'm actually gonna sand it down the edges just so ever so slightly. It's the same reason for cutting it. Kind of like sticking it down harder on the side versus letting it curl up naturally. Essentially, it's like a preventative thing. Not everybody does it, not everybody needs to do it, but pretty crazy with my grip tape. Like, I hate dirty grip, I hate bad grip. So I try to set it up good right away. Also, I should go into the dimensions. This wheelbase is actually a little smaller than what people think transition wheelbases should be. A lot of people like a 14.5 wheelbase for transition skating, but I love a shorter wheelbase for transition skating. I don't always want like a super long drag and mellow, mellow turns. I like it to be quick and snappy, you know? So it's a kind of contradictory. I think it's kind of funny how like a lot of people assume transition skaters want that big, big wheelbase. But I don't think that's always true. So next thing I'm gonna do is get my trucks on, get these Ace AF1s on. I'm still loving them. I would go with the classics if you can. I think the classics are actually harder to find versus the AF1s. I was in a skate shop the other day where they had the classics. So probably more likely to get the Ace classics in a skate shop than online. I still like the AF1s. I just think the hardware issue was kind of annoying at first with the nylon. I think it was like a little bit of a defect. Other people said they had a similar issue, but I'm also gonna switch up my rails because my black rails, got so warped from the curb that we're skating recently in the Bone Swiss video that I feel like if I put them back on this board, they're already gonna have a problem. And I have these white Bones ribs rails and they have these little grivets on the side. I do wanna try the Little John rails. I don't know, I'm kind of at a place where I think I'm just gonna make some rails myself that have some sort of tensile strength in them that they, they don't get snagged and they don't get grabbed because every rail that I've tried always has some sort of issue. My trucks are getting pretty grinded down now too. I've had them for quite a while since the Ace video. I would say at least like probably like five months now. They're still working really good. It took a while to get them into the groove. If you haven't tried Aces, try them. If you're an indie guy, I understand. But almost everyone that I know that was like an indie committed independent trucks guy that started riding Aces, just tried them, never went back. If you did go back to indie from Aces, please let me know. I'd be curious as to why. So yeah, this is the annoying part with the Allen head hardware. And you guys are probably dreading watching this right now because I'm not using a skate tool. I apologize in advance. Now, I will get into the width of this board. 
is an 875. That's been like the constant width I've been skating lately. I was riding 8.5s for a really long time. I got an even bigger board, like a nine inch board. I was used riding a lot of different sizes last year in general. I feel like this year I've been like consistently riding 8.75. Like it's almost more important than anything now. And the wheelbase. Some people would argue the wheelbase is actually more important than the width of the board. And I think it just really depends. If you're the type of person that needs a long wheelbase, then yeah, maybe it, it matters. My wheelbase can change a little bit. I don't think it plays a huge role for me. I've even gotten a tool where I adjusted wheelbases on the same board. You can definitely start to notice where you get too much drag or you get too too much snap and it's like too swervy. It's kind of fun to like play with your wheelbase and just see what it does. So I think explaining it, like I can, I've, I've tried to explain like how it feels and the difference between a long and a big wheelbase, but it's one of those things I think unless you actually do it yourself and experience a difference, you can't really notice. We won't really be able to tell what the benefits and disbenefits might really be. So we almost got this second truck on here. Time to get these rails on there. Having so much issue with the rails lately. So this time I'm actually gonna drill holes where the rails should go. I'm gonna glue them in there. So I feel like that is the best process that I've done in the past that really stuck the rails in there. Man, this is a tedious, tedious way to do this with an Allen head. I really just wanted to set my board up because the rails were falling off my other board and they were just getting so loud. Someone recently asked me in the live stream how long I skate my boards for. Typically my boards last like five weeks, six weeks, just lately because I've been skating so much. Like I try to skate like four times out of the week and out of those four times I'm trying to wrap up this video part. I don't know about wrap it up. I'm trying to get to the final stage of it, not really wrapping it up yet. I keep saying that. Point being is I'm skating and abusing my boards a lot more than regular. So I'm going through them faster. All right, let's get these rails on there. So I figured we'd go with the white rail since, uh, you know, we got the white board on there. Fits on there just right where the edge is. Now, a lot of people like to ride their board with the rails a little bit tighter, so the all rail contact. I like them off the concave a little bit just to get a little bit of grab from the actual deck as well. It's kind of contrary to having rails, but it's really like what works for you. So what I'm gonna do is use this little drill right here and just mark up where I actually want the rails to be. And I have the wheel wheels, so obviously I gotta work around the wheel wheels too. In line. All right, I'm gonna do one side at a time versus trying to do both right away. Cause I think that's where you get a little overwhelmed. So this is the hard part. Like I didn't want to use this glue, I had some other stuff, but I have to go with the good old E6000. Now what will be nice with the glue is that I can kind of place it where I want it. Oh baby, you can like wipe it up with a paper towel after we screw it in there. And you also want the lowest power on your setting. So you don't want to have that thing too high not the lowest but like a medium so that you're not stripping it out like right there when it doesn't go further i just stop it and then i'll hit it back with the screwdriver in a second that way the screw's not just spinning in the wood which tends to happen sometimes problem might be that i've used these rails so much that the holes are allowing the top bit to get in there Rails are on there, looking good. Pretty hype on that grip tape now. Can actually fill in some spots too with the clear grip. I need to put the spacers on my bearing because it is really important. You can like get your wheels tighter, get them flush. It will also last longer too. So that's the one thing. This is like a, a maintenance session now from here. And if you're asking, what is he talking about by bones? I made a video recently about these bearings that are in here now. Some of the most expensive skate bearings that you can buy. Oh, I do have the washer in there. I know why I was so convinced. Everyone in the last video was like, you didn't use the washers. I did use them. Convinced myself. That is so funny. I probably just didn't show them in the video. So then I was convinced that I actually didn't do them. This board is ready to go. But also somebody asked if I leave a little wiggle room. I normally do. So I don't have them like super flush. I actually like to have a little bit of wiggle room because I think it helps you with getting out of tricks, getting a little extra turn when you can. So yeah, cleaned up some of this glue just because it'll collect dirt. Otherwise, if you don't clean it up, you just have like a bunch of dirt stuck on your board get a little break-in session on this board then i want to talk a little bit about the wheel wells because i honestly think these wheel wells have allowed me to skate so much better i get so much churn i get so much leverage i can avoid getting wheel bite i wish every board company made wheel wells not to do on every single board but like at least a majority of the boards would be really nice let's uh, move some of this furniture also i got it done before the incense went out how this incense going i didn't start it right away i kind of forgot but i did get it done before we'll say that that was pretty much how much time i had prior so let's talk a little bit more about polar skate boards and why I think, in my opinion, these are the best decks for me right now.
So this Jersey barrier spot is the first spot we're gonna break the board in. Well, not break the board in. I broke it in in the backyard mini ramp, but today I'm trying to get out. I've been trying to film a trick on this for the video part for a while now. Not for a while, but a couple different times. There's a lot of traffic. So we're here first thing in the morning. I'm gonna get warmed up. And then we're gonna get into the details of why this is the perfect setup for me right now. I feel very in touch with my board. I'm one with my board right now. Like it feels really, really good and I don't wanna change anything up. We'll get into those details after the session. The wheelbase on this bad boy is actually 14.375, so it's a lot shorter than the standard wheelbase. Now, the other thing that I think is really important, I'll go into why I think this is working great for me right now, is because it has the wheel wells. I think the wheel wells are so, so crucial. Like I said before, I wish like every skate company had wheel wells on their decks. I would love that. Even though I have the wheel wells, I still get a little bit of uh, burning down here. So I am still like getting my wheels all the way down point is is i don't ride risers and i have 56 millimeter wheels i have some more wheels coming soon so i'll be uh, setting those up but basically the point is that i keep my real low profile my ace trucks and i have big wheels no riser pads so i get that quick quick turn quick responsive turn and i still get that nice snap to the ground and with the shorter wheelbase it's really snappy and still get that nice curvy like long drawn out curves if i want because my ace AF1 haulers just are the best turning truck. So it's the combination. And I will say these size of these trucks are the 66 AF1 66. So they're a different size than the classics. And they fit perfectly to this 875 in my opinion. They say the hanger goes out to nine inches. I still think no matter what, I mean, I look at it and it doesn't really stick out of the board. It's really flush with the board. So it is what it is. And I think the combination of that 875 with the 66 Ace trucks is such, such a good turn that I just don't want to give that up with the wheel well. So combination of these wheels for the six millimeters, the Ace 66s and the 875, like that combo has the best turning and maneuverability that I've ever had. And I just, I feel like I have more board control with this board than any other board that I've ever ridden before. So it's a combination of everything. I have the Bones ribs rails on here, which are doing pretty good right now. They're holding on there. I got the glue on there. So yeah, mainly it's just this deck combination, the size with the wheels, with the trucks that makes this so, so perfect. And then obviously have the bone Swiss bearings in there. So they're really running smooth. Still can barely hear them. We got a little noise in them, a little grit in them now. But yeah, this board is treating me so well. If you have any questions about why this is a perfect setup, let me know down below. Hopefully I explain it. Mainly it's just because I have so much board control. That is the big thing. And it's it's about finding what works for you. This board works for me better than any other board I've had in the past. So that's it. Love y'all. Hit that like button. Mesh.